Thanks to Reddit, I recently came across the Instagram account of Brendan Schmidt, who uses the username Masculine Revival. He is absolutely a dangerous misogynist with a scarily large following in the hundreds of thousands. Like many of these self-improvement speakers who target vulnerable young men, Brendan actually does have a few good ideas. There is some truth in what he says. The men's rights issues that he discusses are important and should be talked about. Things like focusing on men's mental health, giving fathers more legal rights over their family, these are important. They are real concerns. But sadly, he takes these grains of truth and uses them to push these incredibly harmful narratives about how women need to be oppressed, feminism is bad and the cause of all problems, if women didn't have freedom or autonomy over our own bodies then none of these problems would happen, blah blah blah, men's problems are because of women, the only way to be happy is to oppress women and so on. And of course, he is a conventionally attractive man with a conventionally attractive wife who puts out all his content in a very polished but ultimately formulaic way and quite a generic way which does make it very digestible. It's easy to share online, I can understand why people are drawn to him. So people keep falling for it and believing his absolute nonsense and that's what makes men and content creators like him so dangerous. That's why today we're going to be looking through Brendan's Instagram account, we're going to critically analyse the things he's saying, take a look, take a look at the things he gets right and the things he gets horribly horribly wrong and talk about why this is all so dangerous. Just very quickly before we start, if you're new here, hi, welcome, it's wonderful to have you. It would be really really great if you wanted to subscribe to my channel if you're new. And if you've been around a while, just double check and make sure that you're still subscribed because I know sometimes YouTube unsubscribes people and, you know, always good to keep on top of things. If you do want to find me on social media as well, the place I'm most active is Instagram. You'll find me posting pictures of my life, my dog, books I read, makeup I use, all that fun stuff, and also just sometimes sharing pictures of cute animals and fun stuff like that. You can find me at Rachel Oates with a zero instead of an O because my name was taken and I'm annoying like that. I also want to throw in that I am starting back up streaming over on Twitch a little bit more often, so if you want to follow me there, you can do. If you're interested in my merch, I have uh, lots of t-shirts and hoodies and stuff available on my Teespring store. If you prefer more arty stuff, I have photography and art prints available over on my website. My new poetry book is out now, or if you'd like to support my work via Patreon, you can do. I post lots of photos over there, I post things like video notes and scripts and stuff like that, and you can also get exclusive stickers and prints over there sent out to you four times a year, which is exciting. These winter months are always hard because YouTube cuts ad revenue by quite a lot, and also our views are usually down over and around Christmas time like now, so it's always kind of hard to pay the rent, and we sadly still have to, so obviously no pressure at all, but if you can afford to help out over on something like Patreon or by like buying merch or anything like that, it just does really help and keeps the roof over my head. So thank you very, very much. I'm grateful to anyone who can or wants to help. And um, yeah, that's the self-promotion out of the way. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Let's get back to Brendan. Brendan describes himself as the founder of the Masculine Revival Brotherhood, where he hosts online men's meetings for a fee of course, provides online coaching for men for a fee, and offers exclusive online content like blog posts and videos and that sort of thing for a fee. All about masculinity, femininity and relationships, of which he thinks he is quite the expert. According to his website, his content is designed to, and I quote, equip men to reclaim and revive their masculinity through providing the tools to effectively lead better both in life and relationship, and also to equip men and women with the tools, knowledge and perspective they need to thrive in their intimate relationships. His Instagram account is just one of the ways he attracts customers for his $125 a year online content package. This doesn't include any of the coaching or the men's groups or anything like that, he charges extra for them. One of the big things you'll see repeatedly on his Instagram account is the way he constantly puts down the idea of femininity, but he does it in this typical fundy way, because he is a fundy as well, he's very religious, I should throw that out there, um, but he does it in the very typical way of like, oh no, femininity is not bad, it's just different. As a woman you need to be feminine and that means staying in your place. In this one post caption, for example, he writes, I've seen this idea that men have a distinct feminine side, do more harm than good. This doesn't mean men shouldn't have any emotion, creativity or restfulness in their lives. It simply means that they don't have an inner woman or an inner feminine. Everything a man does in his life, he does. 
as a man. While the post itself goes on to read, men don't have a feminine side. Emotions aren't feminine, they're human. And here we have his first grain of truth. This is absolutely true and it is a very important thing to acknowledge and understand. Emotions are normal and useful and should be embraced and understood by each and every one of us. We should all work on our emotional intelligence and our mental health and making sure we understand ourselves, our feelings and those of others. One of the huge problems that there's been in the past is this really toxic idea that real men, masculine men, men men, need to suppress their emotions, ignore them, ooh, stop being a girl about things, all of that rubbish. And it really is rubbish. We absolutely do need to change that. We need to normalise men and women being able to understand and express their feelings freely. And especially when it comes to men, that's really going to help improve men's mental health issues and reduce the numbers of suicides amongst men hopefully. So, grain of truth, something really important to talk about, but then he goes on to absolutely ruin it. He takes this little grain and turns it into toxic sludge. He goes on to say, generally speaking, women relate to emotion in different ways than men do. A man should not relate to his emotions in the same way a woman does. The only feminine side a man needs is his wife. And I have so many problems with this, I don't even know where to start. For one thing, it's all very vague and meaningless and absolute crap, isn't it? What is this even supposed to mean, men and women relate to their emotions differently? How? Why? Where's your proof? It's just very vague. He's saying words, but there's not really much meaning behind them. And then of course there's the underlying misogyny to it all with the implication that, yeah, there's a difference in the way that men and women do things like understand our emotions and that the women's way isn't good enough for men. Men shouldn't do that. The women's way is lesser than, and it's fine for them, but men shouldn't do that because men are better. Men are stronger. Men can't do it the woman's way, the weak, small, lowly woman's way. There is a misogyny there. He goes on to say, tell me I'm wrong. Men should strive to become better at being men rather than trying to cultivate their inner feminine. And for the record, this doesn't mean a man can never have a moment of vulnerability, softness or emotion. Every man that I've ever met that is driving to balance his masculine and feminine energies is way more feminine than he is masculine. I don't really understand what he means here by this feminine way, these feminine energies. I don't know why he thinks that's such a bad thing, why that's so awful. He definitely has something inherently against the idea of being feminine. He doesn't really give any examples, it just seems very rigid and ridiculous, there's like a masculine and there's a feminine and you can't, you shouldn't cross over the road, like, oh, it's silly. I think maybe personally this stuff seems a bit ridiculous to me because just as an individual, I see gender as this big social construct and it's not really something you can have one objective definition of. I think everyone views their own gender in different ways and different people will define masculine and feminine in different ways and that's absolutely okay, you know? If you ask me what makes me a woman, I don't really know if I could give you an answer. I don't really know if I could pinpoint it. I feel like, yeah, yeah, I probably am, but I don't necessarily know why. I don't quite know how to define that. But you ask someone else what makes them a woman and they're going to have a different answer. And then the next person's going to have a different answer. And the next person's going to have a different answer and they're all right, you know? So I guess the idea that some actions, which are just really personal to an individual, like how you feel emotion, the idea of them being masculine or feminine, it just seems a bit of a bizarre concept to me. I don't know. I feel like each individual processes emotions and reactions differently, and while there might be some trends towards, oh, this gender is more likely to do it this way, or this gender is more likely to do it this way, ultimately it does just come down to the individual, doesn't it? You know, you're not gonna say like, oh, you're gonna react in this way because you're a woman. Like, that's not how it works. Even if there's a trend, that's not how it works. I don't really get why we need to label such universal things like having emotions, feeling emotions, understanding emotions as masculine or feminine. I don't see what good that does. I don't see how it's helpful. I don't see the point. I think it's stupid. Doesn't make sense to me, but maybe that's just my personal opinion. I think it's very clear why Brendan has these views though, because he is a misogynist and he does want to belittle and oppress women. We see this throughout all of his content. And I think he thinks his way of doing things as a man is better than the way he assumes 
all women do things. Does that make sense? So he says, men, you should do things my way and you'll be strong like me. Women are weaker than us, so the way women do things is weak. And that's good for them because we want to keep women weak. We need to keep them in their place. So if you, as a man, do things like a woman, you'll become weak too. But if a woman tries to do things as a man, then she risks becoming stronger. And we don't want that. We want them to stay weak. That's his whole undertone to this whole thing. And that's why he's so disgusted by what he says is women acting masculine. Because he worries it's going to make them his equal. And he's so disgusted by the idea of women and being feminine and he thinks it's lesser than that when he sees a man, in his words, acting feminine, he's grossed out by it because he's like, ooh, no, you're better than that. It's all incredibly misogynistic and disgusting and horrible. It's a very warped worldview that all kind of feeds into each other and creates this big, hateful, misogynistic, I want to oppress women ideology, you know? He goes on to say, Men like this tend to struggle with forward movement in life. They, feminine men this is, men with feminine sides. They are too soft and passive. They struggle to maintain meaningful bonds with other men and often place far too much weight on their emotional experience to be effective at being men. <laughs> this is of course all utter nonsense, but you also hear the implication in all this that, like I'll say it again, what he perceives as feminine is in his mind lesser than what he perceives as masculine. He thinks the feminine is weaker, lesser, will hold you back. It's all misogynistic crap. He then devolves into heteronormative, stereotypical, ridiculous assumptions in another post in which he writes, oh, you'll enjoy these lists, they're ridiculous. Feminine women don't want weak, overly apologetic nice guys. Boys in men's bodies who reject the responsibility of manhood. Men who don't know what they want or where they're going in life. To end up feeling like a mother therapist or personal counsellor. Okay, that one I do agree with. Emasculated men that fear their own masculine power. Feminine women do want men that are unapologetically men. Masculine men that understand the responsibility that comes with being a man. Men who aren't wrapped up in boyish vices. Men with a clear direction and vision. Self-motivated men. To feel cherished and loved. To feel claimed and like his woman. And you know what, actually, at first glance, I didn't think this was quite so awful at first. I was like, hmm, okay, some of these just seem like things that anyone would want in a long-term partner, right? To be loved, for their partner to be responsible, for their partner to be independent and you not have to look after them constantly. That actually seems really fair. What's the problem with this? But then I looked closer and I looked again and I was actually like, yeah, you know what, this is all a bunch of crap. Not only is it trying to suggest that every single person in the world wants a heterosexual, monogamous, long-term relationship, which is obviously not the case, but it's claiming that within that group of people, everyone values the same very narrow set of traits, including harmful stereotypes like women not wanting weak, overly apologetic, nice guys. Being nice doesn't make you weak for a start. But also the way he's worded this is so that if any of us women do come along and say, well, actually, that's not exactly right. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for this instead, blah, blah, blah. Like he can turn around and say, well, that's because you're not a feminine woman. You're not a real woman. You're not doing it right. And he can continue to put us down and say, there's something wrong with you. You're not doing it the right way that you should. Real women want this. You don't want this. You're not a real woman. He then goes on to write, Men supply the frame and structure, women give it beauty and life. Which may be one of the most laughably stupid interpretations of a relationship I've ever heard, but okay. The next post is similar to this, but the opposite way around. Um, apparently this is what men want. Men don't want masculine women, feminist women, boss babes, women who want to compete for power in the relationship, women who emasculate, control, and bring drama. Funny enough, I can tell you now, as a feminist woman who works for herself, I also don't want to have to compete for power in a relationship. I want equal power from the beginning. That should be a given, not something we have to fight for. If you have to fight your partner to be equal in something, that's not a partnership. Get out of there. And I say that no matter what gender you are. All that said though, while I'm sure there are some men who don't want these traits, there's also a hell of a lot out there who do, my own partner included. He's a feminist himself, of course he wants to date a feminist as well. <laughs> but of course, the way it's written here is to shame men into thinking 
that these things are wrong. It's to shame men who do have these beliefs as well. If a man's there like, oh, well, I'm a feminist and I want a partner who's a feminist, then Brendan's here saying, ha, you want that? You're not a real man, shame on you. Which of course is ridiculous and pathetic and probably stems from Brendan's own insecurities rather than anything else, but it's just horrific. Posts like this aren't actually helping men. They aren't helping vulnerable men or men who need help or advice or self-confidence. They're just shaming more men into kind of feeling their own insecurities more. Posts like this are bad for men's mental health. Apparently, masculine men do want feminine women, supportive, nurturing and loving women, women who objectively make life better, women who bring peace and gentleness, women who are respectful and encouraging. And honestly, these aren't all bad traits at all. Things like wanting a partner who's respectful, encouraging, makes you happy, supportive, that is all good stuff. I can't complain about that. There's nothing wrong with that. Lists like this, these are just as little grains of truth in the whole toxic context, you know? It's what makes content like this so dangerous because it's not all wrong. If it was all wrong and all absurd, not as many people would fall for it. But when you have some bits like this correct and say, yeah, you know what? I do actually want a supportive woman. People cling on to those little grains of truth and think, well, he's right about this. What else is he right about? He's probably right about the other stuff too. And that's how they fall into these toxic, misogynistic and manipulative, horrible like traps disguised as self-improvement. Brandon then claims, Understand this. Many women don't know that they want to adhere to traditional gender roles until they meet a masculine man who knows what he wants and knows where he's going and offers, and offers her the opportunity to come with him. Our society doesn't show women that being a full-time mother, wife and homemaker is even an option. Is he serious here? Because I'm pretty sure for most of my life that has been the default option that society has shown. It's only in recent years that we've been able to have more visibility for women who don't actually want that. More vi visibility for women who are having different lifestyles. More visibility for women who say, actually, here's another option. I think the problem here is that people like this, fundies like Brendan who believe in traditional gender roles and homophobia and transphobia and all of that disgusting nonsense, they only want their opinion out in the world and they don't let others express themselves. They want everyone and everything to agree with them and their lifestyle and what they think is the only way to live your life. So when people like myself come along and say, actually, there are many ways to live your life and I'd like to see them all represented. I want to see the housewife. I want to see the mother. I want to see the career woman. I want to see the person in the polyamorous relationship. I want to see the trans women. I want to see this and this and that. Like when you want to see everyone represented and have visibility for all kinds of lifestyle and people and have them able to share their experiences. What people like Brendan hear is, wait, you want to replace my ideas with yours? And I'm like, no, I want my ideas out there alongside yours. I don't want you to be homophobic and racist and transphobic and all of that stuff, but your idea of, I want a wife and kids and traditional gender roles, I want that to be expressed alongside mine. Simple as that. But it's impossible for people like Brendan to comprehend because they only want their lifestyle represented and shown and viewed as an option. They can't comprehend that some people support all different lifestyles. It's weird, it's truly bizarre. He ends his post with a nice little bit of victim blaming and shaming and we'll just listen to it really. Ladies, are basic rules, roles and expectations in a relationship oppressive? Or are you just wounded in your relationship with your father? One, not every person wanting independence or a lifestyle different from your norm is the result of trauma. More often than not, not the case at all. Two, let's say a person, in this case a woman, does have a bad relationship with their father. How is that her fault? How is that something you can sit there and talk about like it's shameful for the woman? How is it not her father's fault? How is he not the one being shamed? He was the adult who was responsible for bringing a kid into this world and not treating them properly. He's the one at fault, not the child. And three, basic rules, roles and expectations is one thing, the ones you're suggesting are oppressive. It's like someone handing me a cheese and human meat toasty, me having a problem eating it and you saying, what, you have a problem with cheese toasties? It's not the toasty that's the problem, it's that specific feeling. 
Next up, we get to Brendan's inevitable transphobia and shaming anyone who wants anything vaguely different from him in his life with some snarky sarcasm. He says, extremist views in 2022. Men and women are equal in worth, but also vastly different from each other. Masculinity isn't toxic. The absence of it is. There are only two genders. Marriage is a lifelong commitment. I think we all know how ridiculous and harmful and just plain wrong some of these are. You don't need me to tell you. But laughably, he goes on to claim, But this doesn't make me a misogynist. True misogyny is a condemnation and contempt for women. Men that are truly misogynistic have a hatred for women. They aren't actively championing women to embrace their feminine potential. Okay, no. You're not condemning and hating women at all, are you? You're just saying that their way of doing things is less than your way as a man, and that you'll treat women with a barely basic level of human decency, just so long as they remember their place and stay subservient to you, right? That's not misogynistic at all. And you're not hating trans women, are you? You're just denying their existence. That's not misogynistic at all. What's that? You don't hate non-binary people. Again, you're just denying their existence. Yeah, what's the problem there? You can't say like, oh, I'm not misogynistic, but, and then say something misogynistic. The next post we're gonna look at reads, 50-50 relationships don't work. Absolutely not true. Every relationship's different and individuals have to figure out what's best for them. Some 50-50 relationships work, some don't. Different people have different needs. Simple as that. Casual sex is destructive. Again, absolutely not true. Sure, it can be for some people, but not everyone. Plenty of people enjoy this and it aligns with their personal goals and values and it's not a problem for them. It's not destructive for them. Again, different people have different values and goals. It's fine. Polyamory is garbage. Absolutely not. And your wording here is needlessly offensive. Sure, it's not right for some people, but it absolutely is for others. People are allowed to want different kinds of relationships with people as long as it's done ethically and safely and all partners agree to it and are open to it and the communication's there. If all that's in place, what is the issue really? Modern relationship advice is backwards. This is so vague and it doesn't actually say anything. What advice? What does it mean to be backwards? This is a non-statement. Hookup culture is degenerative. Again, not at all true. Just because people are now able to decide what they want from life, what they value, what their goals are, and they're able to find pleasure where and when they want it with less shame than before, that doesn't make things degenerative. Again, as long as people are being safe, communicating with their partners, and it's all consensual, what is the problem? From what I've seen, the hurt comes from people not communicating with each other about expectations and values or even practical stuff like contraception. The hurt comes from people not understanding their own needs and values properly. Teach people how to think about that stuff for themselves. Teach people how to have those conversations instead of just condemning different behavior, which in itself isn't inherently good or bad. Things like hookups can be great for some people and terrible for others. Again, it's all down to the individual. The next post, again, is another one that has some genuinely good grains of advice to it, but it's just too narrowly focused on one kind of person and forgets that other people exist too. Apparently, masculine men don't fall in love then blindly hope things will work out. Masculine men assess compatibility from a clear and sober mind and then choose to love as an extension of a logical thought process. He makes it sound so ridiculous and clinical and boring, but if you do read the next slides, he does have a bit of a point, you know? When a man dates without clear intention, that's when he ends up falling into chaotic and confusing relationships that lack direction. He doesn't know what he really wants or where he's going, develops a deep attachment, and then tries to figure it all out on the fly. This is how years get wasted and hearts get broken. I agree with bits of this and not others. For one thing, I think this can apply to absolutely any gender, not just men looking at women, but I also think if you are specifically looking for a long-term relationship, then dating with a clear understanding of your personal values and the values you need in a partner is a very, very useful thing. And I'm not gonna disagree with him on this at all. However, we also have to recognize that not everyone wants this. Some people do just wanna casually date for a while and that's okay. Again, 
as long as you're communicating with your partner or partners. There are more reasons for dating than just getting into a long-term relationship. And depending on what you want and what your long-term goal is and what outcome you want, you need to take different approaches to this. And that is okay. Dating can help us understand things about ourselves, learn about other people. It can be fun, it can be exciting. It can bring us new opportunities that we wouldn't have had before. And none of that means you're wasting years because ultimately you are getting something out of it. You are growing as a person, you are enjoying yourself, you are learning and changing and bringing joy to others as well. That's not wasting anything. And let's say you do want a long-term relationship and you end up with someone, even long-term, that it doesn't end out with. Again, that's not a failure, that's not a waste. I think we need to stop calling ended relationships failures because they're not you had an amazing time together, you learned about yourself, you cared for someone, you shared amazing experiences, you grew together. Just because it didn't continue, that doesn't make it a waste. Brendan then gives nine questions a man should think deeply about when considering marrying a woman. And the first one, or the first couple actually, give me like major women of property, are you good enough for me to own you vibes? It's really bad. Is this woman worthy of carrying your last name? Do you want to tie your bloodline to hers forever? Would she make a good wife and mother of your children? These can all be good questions if you want a traditional marriage and kids, but again, we need to recognize not everyone wants that. I don't, my partner doesn't, so these questions would have been absolutely useless to us when we first met. And finally, we are gonna look at a post with the caption, Make housewives and homemakers great again. He, he opens well, actually. You can be both a strong and capable woman and a stay-at-home wife and mother. Absolutely true. Could not agree more. But then that little grain of truth devolves into ways a woman can bring value to her home without a job. Eliminate the need for a housekeeper. Eliminate the need for childcare. AKA, women should be made to do all this labor for free because they're women and that's their role. This is exactly what feminists have been arguing against for forever. The idea that women do all of this unpaid labor because it's expected of them, not because they're choosing to do it. You know you can also eliminate the need for a housekeeper if everyone in the home just contributes to taking care of it, right? It doesn't all have to fall on the woman. Also, is it really that common for people to have housekeepers? I don't know, maybe it's just because like I grew up poor, but I think that's like a major luxury. <laughs> Cook from scratch rather than eating out. Take care of your family's health by creating nourishing meals. Again, this is possible while working, you know? I work full time and cook for myself. <laughs> My partner works full time and he cooks for me and him plenty. Find ways to take care of little details so your husband can focus more on work and generating income. Find a creative side hustle that you can do part-time from home if supplementing your household income would be beneficial to your family. Seems to me like this is more about controlling the woman and what she does and where she goes and men putting their own personal goals and interests above those of their partner than anything else. So that grosses me out a bit. But that's actually where I'm gonna end this today. Brendan actually has a lot more to say and there are a lot more posts I want to look at but I don't want this video to get too long. So I am going to be making a second video of them so look out for that in the next few days, weeks, words. What happened to my words then? <laughs> look out for that video soon basically. Um, but for now I'd love to know what you think of Brendan and his masculine revival. What do you think about these kinds of content creators that have these little grains of truth in what they're saying but then it all devolves into misogynistic ranting, homophobic ranting, transphobic ranting, just all of this absolute nightmare stuff. And also I'd like to know what you think about the people who follow this kind of stuff. Who do you think they are? Do you think it is mostly vulnerable young men or you know, do we need to have more sympathy for them? Do we need to be angry at them? Do we need to be pragmatic about how we approach them? How do you think we do this? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. But for now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Uh, feel free to follow me over on Instagram and I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you again really soon. Thank you for watching.